Hey guys, Ramsey here for a new Ray Charles and video and today we're going to be covering the Infinity team for Hydra specifically. I'm going to try to explain to you how the team works in a very simple way. I'm going to show you the rotation, the gear, all the champions you can use to replace all of these. The only two you can't replace is Cadaver and Brogni. Uh, the rest you can change everyone. Based on that, your damage is, is going to be different, but you can still do some very solid damage. We are on a hard mode here. What I'm going to show you is going to work on normal as well. For Brutal and Nightmare, you're going to need some different champions, which I don't have, uh, but we'll be talking about all of that. And we're also going to talk about each Hydra, Hydra heads, which one we want to prioritize, which one, which one we want to kill first, etc., etc. Anyways, I'm really going to explain it to you in a very simple way so that as many of you can actually use that team and help you clan in Hydra Clash. Very quick introduction about myself. Before we start, I've been a French content creator for Rachel Legends for the past four years. I started playing very early in 2019, so I've been uh, playing the game for longer than most of the content creators out there. Uh, but so far, my content's been in French and I'm now switching to English, uh, there we go, just so that you know real quick about me. Um, so the team, very simple. So the two champions that you absolutely need, just to explain to you really quickly, I work, so you're gonna need Under Priest Brogni. Most of you are going to have it. If you wanna use that team or a similar team for clan boss, because you have a very similar team for clan boss, you again are gonna need those two champions, absolutely. So Iso Pass Fusion, most of you are going to have it. What we want to use here is uh, this part of the skill here. Increase the value of shield buff on all allies by 30% of the damage inflicted. The goal is going to be to attack as often as possible and to do as much damage as possible to increase the value of that shield. This is going to allow Copeland Cadaver, is he in this faction right here, on his A1, that's mainly what we're going to use. Attack one enemy, inflict additional damage if the champion is under a shield buff. The damage is equal, equal to 30% of the value of the shield. So the more we grow that shield with Brogni, the more he's going uh, to do damage. Copeland is going to do damage here. The goal is to get to a point where we one-shot the head as quickly as possible. Uh, you'll see in the run, you get to a point where every time a head pops out, you can one-shot her instantly. The rest of the team is going to be here to place debuff, place buff, and extend those buffs. That's going to be... Uh, very important. So I'm going to show you uh, the beginning of the run of my key that I did today uh, and then I'm going to show you the gear, all the replacement, uh, all the, the other champions uh, you can use because again other than these two you have a lot of options on who you can use in the team. So I'm going to show you the beginning of this run. That's the team I've used. That's my key uh, for this week. I did a little less than last week. I've replaced Lana Kiss by Emic. This team is supposed to be a lot better, honestly, because uh, it's a little harder to extend the buff, but Emic is going to reset or uh, reduce the cooldown of Brogni's A2, uh, which allow him to play more often, and therefore we can get to that damage uh, where we one-shot the head faster. It, it just didn't work out for me. I don't know why I've tried dozens of times, and it, doesn't work, it didn't work out as well as I expected, but it, it is still a very nice key, especially if you're on hard, is the case here you're obviously going to double that for the hydra clash um so not as good as last week but technically this team could do uh better so i'm going to the beginning of the run let's see yeah so th that's it right here now keep in mind it's a run that lasts you know 40 minutes or so uh it's, it's very long it is semi-automatic so you're going to start manually for the first turn or two just just to set set things up really nicely uh, and then you can go full auto. I do take a couple breaks here and there if I want to uh, place provoke on the head or whatever. Uh, but it's mainly hard auto, and then you just need to click on the head as they pop out. So it's it's pretty easy. Uh, helps you clean a lot for Hydra Clash. Um, there you go. So very easy setup here. Keeping in mind, guys, that Plyum already told us that they're going to fix. They said they, did, they were not going to fix Cadaver specifically. They didn't want to nerf him, but they're working on adjusting the Hydra uh, so that we can't do that kind of damage anymore. Uh, so we're not sure what it's going to be. I'm assuming it's going to be something very similar than, uh, you know, all those heads 
you limit it limited to uh, when you do the damage based on max HP, you limit it to 10% of the HP of the heads. I'm assuming it's going to be something very similar, uh, limited damage when you're under shield or something like that. I don't know yet. Uh, but keeping in mind that use this strategy as long as you can, but eventually it's going to be a little harder, I believe, to, uh, to make it happen. So very easily here, uh, we started with uh, Lydia. We have Lydia in this team. She's here to place uh, defense down and weakened and also putting increased speed on our team, which is very important. Uh, let me let me just backtrack a little bit right here because we already did a turn up, up. Is that the run? Yeah, that's the run that I'm keeping. I, I've, I've restarted a couple times, so I just want to make sure that's the, that's the run here. Uh, up. And before we start, I'm just going to show you the team here. So you'll understand the gear as well later. Uh, again, Chris is here to extend the buff. He's also placing, obviously, a bunch of important buff and debuff. Uh, but he's mainly here for the provo provoke, if we want to use the provoke. Uh, but uh, mainly here for uh, extending the buff. Uh, Lydia, again, defense down, weaken, and uh, speed increase. We've already talked about Brogni and Cadaver. That guy, I can't remember his name. He is here again to extend the buff. And why I really like to use it is because we're facing the blue head. And the blue head is a pain because she's placing fear uh, on almost everyone all the time. So that way we have two clans here. Uh, Brogni cleanses with A2 and he does the same with his A2. So it's allowing us to remove that fear. Uh, and it's very important to remove it because at the beginning, if... Too many of your buff extender get feared, then you're not gonna extend the buff enough and, and the runs aren't gonna work. Emic is here mainly for that reset with his A2. Again, uh, didn't work out as, as well as intended for me, uh, but you can use another buff extender. The other team that I showed you earlier is exactly the same with Lanakis instead. Uh, so another buff extender will work just fine here uh, to get to that billion damage. If that's your goal. If you want to do more damage, uh, you're most likely going to need your Makos. Uh, you, can, you can still do more damage than that, but if you didn't want to go to Brutal Nightmare, you need your Mako. Uh, you just can't. I don't think you can do it without, without her. So here we're going to open with uh, Lydia's A2. Then we're going to... I'm going to mute up, up, up. We're going to start extending with Krisk. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but Krisk is also on a curse set so that we can uh, place that debuff right here, which is very important to target this head. Otherwise, that one is it gets very annoying because even though we have enough resist on everyone, you'll see the gear later, uh, she can still seal the buff. If she steals Cadaver's buff, the run's over, you can basically start over, which is basically what happened to me at the end here. I was you know, almost done, but she still, steal of my, all, still stole all of my buff, uh, and I lost a bunch of damage because of it. Uh, even though I have enough resist, it's just that 3% chance that she has to steal them anyways. Uh, with Emic, we're going for A2, resetting uh, that cooldown already. Then here we're going to cleanse and extend those buff again with him. Brogni, I'm starting with my A3. Why am I starting with my A3 here? Um, because I'm placing increased attack. So I don't need the shield because I have Chris that's already starting with his passive, he's already starting the team with a shield on, but Chris, uh, Brogni is going to uh, add increased attack right here, which is gonna going to allow him to do more damage in the long run, especially that we're going to extend all those buffs, therefore keep the buff the entire time. Um, and we're gonna do something else to help the damage. As you can see here, with Cadaver, for now I'm not doing any damage anyway, so I'm going to provoke that head on the left. I can't remember the, the name of the heads, honestly. Lydia doesn't matter. She can do EC, uh, whatever she wants here. So a little bit of French here and there, just because I'm, I'm used to speaking French during these videos. Here we're going to do A1 with Chris. Again, you can replace Chris, no problem. Uh, Emic, we're going to do A2. Again, we're resetting, uh, reducing cooldown and extending buff. With Emic, actually, I'm going to wait here a little bit. Wait one turn to do it. So here, what's very important with this um, champion here, we're going to do his A3 because that's going to give us increased uh, crit rate and increased crit damage, which again is going to help my Brogni. 
So that's what we're going to be doing now. And now basically we can go full auto. Now we're going to start doing some really good damage with Brogni. Uh, and that's obviously the goal here. Uh, I'm going to be targeting that head. You know, she's going to be the priority. Now with Chris here, I'm going to, um, uh, did, I did a three, a three here to place the provoke. It's not ideal because again, here you want to be extending those buffs as much as possible. Uh, but we also want to keep provoking her, especially at the beginning, just to make sure we keep that damage and those debuff up uh, as long as we can. So I'm still manually here, but it's basically full auto. Uh, you may set up the beginning a little differently based on your speed. The speed are really open, honestly. There's no really set speed uh, to make that team work, uh, just because we're going to have an increased speed the entire time. Uh, everyone's going to have different masteries that boost turn meters. Uh, we're going to have a uh, reflex set on some of them ex uh, as well. So the speed, the speed really, I'll give you the range, but it's really open speed wise. Uh, so now we full auto, the priority is always going to be this head when we can, uh, because if she gets lucky and get that 3%, even though we have enough resist, she can always steal the, the buff from him. The other thing is to target this uh, head, we need the curse set from Chris to be um, activating uh, the debuff right here. There we go, she just stole the buff. That's okay, because she stole them from Chris. Uh, we want to kill her as fast as possible because we can get, we could get to a point where uh, Chris doesn't place the, the debuff. I can't remember the name of that debuff. I'll write it down somewhere. Um, curse, I guess it's the curse debuff. Um, we just, we just, it, 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 we might get in trouble if we don't place that debuff. So we want to target her as 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 quick as possible. Uh, then the head that's going to place, uh, that's going to uh, cleanse everything. So we want to provoke her. Uh, again, when we get to that stage where we want shooting heads, it won't matter. But at the beginning here, as long as you're extending your buff enough, you can once in a while manually take a take a break and with Krisk place the provoke instead if you need to. Uh, this head right here, we do not care at all because that head does absolutely nothing against us for that team. And she's the tankiest, so she's actually a lot harder to kill. So that one we're going to ignore completely. The blue head, uh, she's, she's the easiest to kill, uh, but she's going to place fear on us. So it's I think the goal with that one is also to ignore her for now, uh, the beginning as much as we can. Um, but... Yeah, so I, I like to take, you know, the one who's going to steal the buff first, then the one who's going to cleanse, uh, and then there's the other head that's going to actually uh, place the cloud buff, which we want to get rid of as quick as we can as well, because then that reduces our damage. Uh, I like to also uh, take care of Wrath pretty quickly when I can, because if I lose my buff on someone for some reason, because they get eaten or whatever it is, or just they're just too fast and we can't extend fast enough at the beginning. Uh, she can kill someone. That head can kill someone at the beginning. I have multiple instances where my Chris actually died. Uh, so we want to get rid of her pretty quickly as well if we can. That's the order, basically. So the one who's going to steal the buff, because again, that 3%, if she steals cadaver, we, we're done. This one was going to cleanse, because if she cleanses, we're going to lose damage, unfortunately. The, head, the other head, she's not here right now, but the head was going to place, place uh, the cloud buff. Then uh, this one, Wrath, then the blue, and then this one. Now that's for that rotation. Uh, again, that rotation is pretty annoying because of the fear debuff. And, and you know, if you get really unlucky, uh, the fear debuff is going to, uh, you, you're just not going to be extending quick enough. Uh, so that could be a, a problem. So you may have to restart your run a couple times. Uh, but that's basically how it works here. Very important as well is who is going to be um, eaten, you know? So so I've had to restart that run a couple of times because the way it works is the first one who is targeted is going to be the champion with the highest crit damage. Uh, and then it's completely random. So I had plenty of instances where I actually started the run and was doing like double the damage. I, I guess I had a lot of luck with my reflex gear and refresh gear and whatnot. Uh, and I, I was doing double that. Uh, I, I just started again here, and there you go, example, because the Chris just died. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. That was a actually a really good example 
of someone losing the buff and then the wrath head killing it. Uh, anyways, I've had a lot of time where I had to restart because someone, because cadaver, you know, gets targeted. So if he gets targeted towards the end, it's no big deal, but you want to go for a while before he gets targeted. Other things that I've changed, my Brogni, since he has the most damage, he was the one being targeted first. So what I did here is I took this champion again, I can't remember his name, I've increased his, his crit damage a little higher, higher than Brogni, so that he's the first who gets eaten, which gives my Brogni, uh, at least at the beginning, because we again want to build that damage as quick as we can, uh, that way, Brogni is going to keep his buff a, long, long, uh, a lot longer. So increase attack, increase crit rate, and increase crit damage. Uh, because if he gets swallowed first, he's going to lose all the buff, and then we have to reply it. And at the beginning, it's very annoying because we lose a lot of damage. So that's why I switched that to give Brogni more time to do damage before he potentially gets eaten and, and loses all of his buff. Uh, so yeah, that, that's pretty much how the, the team works. I'm going to show you... Um, if we go a little further here, uh, how the damage start building up. You see, it takes a while. It takes me a while uh, to build the damage. But you see, then we get to a point where we start really one-shotting heads, uh, which makes it uh, really easy. So when you get to that point, you really want to one-shot the heads uh, that are alive. The reason is, even though you would do a bunch of damage to those, the reason is for... Every time a head in front of you is going to take a turn, that counter to when we get uh, eaten goes down and there's just more risk than that your cadaver gets targeted next. So uh, that's why we want to, every time a head pop, pop out, we want to take care of it. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Honestly, if anyone gets swallowed, uh, if anyone loses any buff, it's no big deal as long as it's not your cadaver. Could be annoying, of course. Uh, again, the goal is to keep all those damage increase buff on Brogni, uh, at least for the beginning, until we get to that point where we one shot the head. As as soon as we get to that point where we one shotting heads, it honestly honestly doesn't matter. Uh, but it could take a hundred turns. It takes me probably a hundred turns. So uh, the quicker you get to that, the quicker you're gonna do a lot more damage. Uh, I've seen that exact same team doing double the damage I did today. Uh, just because, again, probably more luck at the beginning with reflex and refreshes, uh, refresh gears and whatnot. Uh, and that's how you, you know, get to that one shot faster and do more damage. So pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward here. Uh, and as you can see, we're going to get to that 1500 uh, turn count. And unfortunately, in this run, we got unlucky. Uh, you're going to see next my uh, cadaver, actually. We got very lucky because he never got targeted to be eaten, but the head who is going to uh, to steal the buff, she's going to target him next, and he's going to lose all of his buff. It's going to happen right here, I believe. I mean, we, we were, you know, almost 100, 100 turn before the end, so I think I would have gotten to the billion damage right here uh, if we would have kept going for the next 100 turn like that, but she's going to steal everything Uh Pretty soon, I believe. Let's see. There we go. No, probably next turn. Uh, next turn she takes probably. Uh, or next next time she pops out. Let's see where she's at. Well, there you go. She's right here. And next turn she takes, she's going to steal uh, the buff. So now we, we would not have gotten to a billion on that key either because I was just too slow at the beginning to do damage, which is very important because I've run that team. And, and done, there we go, she just, she couldn't steal them because she had the block buff here, but she did, you know, basically stole them. Uh, and I'm not doing any damage. So, you know, I've, what, 60 turn from the end, and I did lose a bunch of damage. I could have done really close to the billion, but anyways, I'm going to find you in game, show you all the replacement, all the other uh, heroes you can use, and all the gear uh, and masteries and whatnot on uh, the champions, huh? All right, so I'm going to show you first all the other champions you can use. There's a lot, and there's actually a lot of better options, which I just don't have. So the first one, it's obviously Yumeko that, you know, I don't have, a lot of us don't have, but uh, because of these, decrease the cooldown of all allies skill by three turn and increase the cooldown of all enemies skill, uh, will not decrease the cooldown of this champion skill. Anyway, the, just the first part of that attack, and she plays Hex, Hex, there you go, that's the name of the debuff. Uh, that's why she's so good for Hydra, and that's why, if you look at my clan, let's see, let's see, I don't know if anyone has actually 
uh, done made this team. I don't, I don't think anyone has actually in my clan. Not yet. We don't have a. I guess we don't have a lot of view makers, but uh, brutal hard. Let's see. So you see here we have almost two billion damage. Uh, obviously with all of these. Uh, MX not here. You'll see here she's really good. Psycho here with Yumeko. Uh, that's me right here. And then you also have very similar team right here on normal that you can do. Uh, they work everywhere so if you know you're not going to do enough on hard knowing that it's going to double your point for the hyper clash uh then you can just do a single on normal uh it will lower is here your uh, you know the rewards you get if you do normal instead of hard that's why i'm personally doing hard uh but i would probably do more damage on normal would it be enough to you know do more damage on hyper clash i'm not sure so that's why i go for hard uh, personally so again, other than Brogni and Cadaver, you can use a bunch of other champions. So let me show you everyone you can use. Mainly, obviously, if we can if we can find other things as those champions bring, that's ideal. But the main thing is uh, buff extenders, right? If you have three, it's honestly the easiest. Uh, I don't think there's much here. Secret Order. Uh, so I'm using Interit. Interit. So that that's what I'm using because again, this and here. Is going to extend and cleanse. That's why it's really good for this uh, rotation specifically. You can use Aniri. She's definitely not the best here, but uh, she's going to increase all of your buff. So you can use her. Uh, you can use uh, Lizardman, Skinwalker. Right here. Is there anyone here? I don't think so. Not really. Demon Spawn. I don't think there's anyone here. Undead. I know there's a bunch. I know there's a bunch. Um, no, yeah, I'm going to also show you the the really good legendary you can use. So legendary wise, if you have Maranix, she's amazing because decrease defense and hex, which means you can remove Lydia. I'm using Lydia because I need that increased speed, uh, decrease defense and weakened. Uh, but if you have her, uh, she's one of the best champion for that kind of. Uh, team, so you can use that absolutely for absolutely for those debuff. Um, you can also use as buff extender. Who else is there? I'm, I'm just I'm losing it. Demita, Demita can be used. Uh, we would block this possibly, but here she can increase duration of all of your buff as well. I knew there was an orc, so you can use actually uh, Survivor, which is uh, it was, she was in my team. When I first started, but here she's going to increase all the buff and she has the provoke. So if you don't have Krisk, actually, she's probably one of the best replacements for Krisk. Uh, we can also use Lanakis. I showed it showed it to you in uh, the other team. Uh, again, she's going to place increase crit, crit rate and increase attack, which is really good for Brogni. Uh, and then here you're going to do a light attack, uh, fill turn meter, and increase the duration of our buff. Uh, who else is there? You can actually use very good as well. Mishinaki if you have it. Not for the buff extension, but again, he's going to place increased defense and hex uh, right here, which is amazing. He's one of the best for that as well. Uh, you can also use a fusion, which a lot of you, I'm sure, have done. I did not, but Oela is going to increase the duration of all buff. Uh, decrease speed here. Fill the turn meter right here, which is very helpful as well. Uh, so that's about it and we just used emic again uh, here we is going to increase the duration of buff and also reduce the cooldown cooldown of one skill which helps uh, the broken I'm sure there's other options out there uh, that's the most common one uh, but I'm sure there's others others that you can use uh, but yeah that, that's about about it for me right here champion uh, so the gear the gear is it's it's not hard but it's definitely not you know it, it's end game right we on hydra uh it, it's a, not a, that easy of a team to gear uh i'm going to show you emic so i've actually i've never farmed golem uh, ice golem until recently so i don't have anything i don't have curse set i don't have reflex or, or really low uh so i've used this set which is from the hydra um live arena uh 30% chance to reduce random skill cooldown by one turn, so that's just like reflex, but we get speed in addition to that. Uh, the rest of the stat, other than, and here we train also to put as much um, uh, refresh as we can. Uh, really, all that matters is going to be speed, 
uh, and resist, right? So uh, get close to 400 if you can. I don't think I'm there yet. I'm at 383 uh, and 257 speed. That works well. When I use my Lana Kiss instead, I was about the same stat, honestly. The rest, we really don't care on, on that kind of guy. I don't have champion. Uh, here are the masteries. Um, that works fine. You can go with support and use uh, for all the heroes that are going to place buff and debuff. You can use these, uh, but not uh, not for him because he's not placing any buff or debuff really that we are going to use or that are going to expire because we're going to extend them anyways. Uh, we're also using Lydia. Uh, now Lydia is going to place debuff that are going to expire. So that's why we're using this uh, and then one master. And here we try to find a bunch of accuracy as well. Uh, we have Brainstorm. I don't know if it's the best option here, but uh, she's going to be the fastest, as fast as possible, honestly. Uh, 315. So she's going to be losing a buff at the beginning because she's taking so many turn. Uh, and then resist and accuracy. Accuracy, if you're around 3, 350, should be enough. Uh, and again, around 400 resist uh, should be pretty good. And full speed for uh, Lydia if you decide to use her. Uh, then Brogni full damage. So you, I've seen a lot of people use it, use him on as a, with a reflex set. Again, I really don't have much in reflex, so I, I could not find enough damage. If you can find a bunch of damage and use him in a reflex set, that's gonna be even better. We don't want to use it in um, uh, what's the name of that set? Let me see in English. Tac, tac, tac. We don't want to use him relentless because he's going to lose his buff. It's very important for him to keep his buff and for Cadaver to keep his buff. Uh, so here, reflex if you can, if you can build a bunch of damage. If not, anything like Savage or Lethal to ignore the defense and do more damage. That's perfect. Uh, here, the total stat. 2-9 speed. We don't have 100% crit, crit rate because we're going to uh, use that 30% increase crit rate. We also, we also put that, uh, we have 271 de uh, crit damage, but we're also gonna use that buff. And then the attack is a little low, but we're using that uh, increased attack as well. And again, we have that 400 resist. I've used him at 190 speed uh, and it worked as well. So you, I think you probably, you're pretty open here uh, with the speed as well. You just want him to be fairly low compared to the rest. Uh, and Master is, uh, we went with these uh, up, up, up. Then we have Lanakis. Uh, we did these for Masteries. Uh, see, she doesn't have accuracy, so we just went with that instead. Uh, up, we have four books. Uh, she's not gear here, but she just had the two pieces from uh, Emic from that same set as well, which works really well. Uh, we did get, uh, no, we didn't get, I thought we had 100% crit rate. We probably do have 100% 100% crit rate on her or close to it just just she does a little bit of damage and she's around the 270 speed I think when she's fully geared and same she has a good amount of resistance that's all we need on her who else is in the team uh let me see let me see up 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 I think that's about it legendary wise other than Chris I didn't show you Chris if you have Chris he is the one in the curse set so why I I, I did try with Lydia Lydia works great, but she only has one AoE attack. He has two AoE attack, so you know, double the chances to uh, place the Hex debuff. Uh, same, as much speed as possible, and then re resist and accuracy. That's all you need, really. Uh, refresh if we can, and that's about it for Chris. And here are his masteries. Now, again, uh, that if we can use that on some of them, I probably should put it on more... Uh, heroes to get it back and and that would probably help my damage for sure uh, But I didn't want to pay to redo my masters and stuff when I know the team works and does a billion damage So cycle of magic really helps uh, And then I could have definitely used that as well because that reduced speed debuff uh, is going to expire So well expire so that would have helped as well um, And then when it comes to the epic and I'm going to your cadaver cadaver is obviously very important um here we have him. Uh, I did put some damage on him. I, I forgot to put the blessings. We'll see what we put. Uh, probably just like a, I don't know, cruelty or something just to increase the damage. I'm not sure. And here, uh, I do have him on reflex and he's pretty slow, but he's on reflex. So, you know, it, it kind of compensates for it. 
I did put a little bit more crit damage and crisp uh, than uh, Brogni. I told you why at the beginning. And same good amount of resistance. He doesn't need any accuracy. We don't have 100% crit rate because we're going to have that buff again. Uh, so that's it for him. Pretty straightforward here. And the last one is going to be the MVP Copeland Cadaver. So it's very important for him. Uh, counter attack. Uh, uh, rings and annulate and whatnot if you can that's great because when you start one shotting heads if you can counter attack and one shot those heads faster you're going to do more damage so that really helps for sure uh if you can use some of that set here 15 percent chance of counter attacking when hit uh that just adds up, adds up a lot a lot so retaliation is a really good set and then you just want one set that has the divine so it doesn't have to be divine speed like me divine offense divine crit rate divine life and divine speed one of those because he's going to start with an extra shield uh which is then then going to be extended so one divine one divine set and then if you can two retaliation set uh i don't have uh, another one unfortunately so i had to go with something else but um if you can do two of those and one divine that's perfect for him uh we do have books even though they're not necessarily necessary and we have uh, that for the masteries total stat right here uh pretty slow he's a little um so he has a resist very important the rest uh other than the speed we don't care about anything else uh, we did made him a little slower than brogni i did try that same team the other day uh, and he was a little faster than brogni and i feel like he wasn't working as well uh, so again you can play around with the speed but that's about where you want to be i think it's better if he's slower than brogni but i've seen a lot of team where he's faster than brogni uh so maybe try both again depending on the champions you have you know uh, with Emic, that's how it worked the best for me. With that Emic, maybe it works better if he's faster. You gotta just try and see. Uh, Sunlash, I'm not using her anymore, but that's how she was geared. You know, so you, you can have a couple of champions that are over 200 speed. Uh, that works well, but they're not, it's not necessary. Uh, I've done that team 1 billion damage. I only have Lydia, who is over 300. The rest, a lot of them are between, you know, 250 and 270. So uh, you don't really need all that 300 plus speed. To do the billion damage if you want to go a lot further i'm sure you need more i don't know uh that's how far i've gone uh with my team personally uh there you go guys i hope that was helpful i know it's a little long i know it's it could be a little complicated if you have any questions put them in the comment uh and i'll see you in the next video